next up, the comfortable temperatures this week have been a treat, but it is the time of year when we'll need to prepare for the inevitable cold weather. One of the first things on the list are farms and our animals. Last week, we told you some ways beef producers can get their herds ready when the temperature drops. This week, UNL Extension educator Kim Clark tells us what steps dairy producers need to take for healthy cows and hopefully healthy profits. So if you think about winter time, it's a little colder, so a little more energy is needed to maintain body temperature. And so that's something that we need to think about as nutritionists and dairy producers are formulating rations. We really want to make sure that we're not only meeting growth in, in typical energy needs, but we need to think about a cooler environment as well. Um, really, cows like an environment that's right around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so the insides of barns, typically our freestyle barns, are going to be right in that optimal range anyway. So um, a little bit of concern for meeting energy needs, but maybe not as much as the beef cattle side. Definitely. So talk to me about body condition scoring and why we need to pay particular attention to that during the colder months. So body condition scoring, um, so for the dairy cattle, we use a scoring system of one to five, where one is very thin, five is overly um, overly fat. And so we always want to try, no matter what time of year, we want to keep right around that body condition score of three for lactating dairy cows. Um, just depending on if they're pregnant, early lactation, late lactation. So if we can maintain right around that 3% body condition score all year long, that's optimal. And there may be some producers who have calves that are recently born, young calves. What are some things that we can do with calves during the winter time to make sure that they're staying safe and that they're comfortable and that they're healthy? Calves are probably the animals that we need to be most concerned with. Um, they, they're lower body weight. Um, it's really hard for them to maintain their body temperature. And so uh, during the winter months, we're um, providing calf jackets, we're adding calf jackets to the calves. Anytime temperatures are 50 degrees or below, we want to make sure those calf jackets are on the calves. That way they can focus all of their, their food that they're consuming, whether it's a, a pelleted starter grain or um, milk or colostrum. They're taking those energy needs and applying it to their growth, not to maintain their body temperature. If they're in hutches, we want to make sure that the hutches are facing away from that cold wind. So in Nebraska, we recommend facing the hutches to the south or southeast. Um, any winds coming from those directions typically are, are warmer. Um, add extra bedding to any housing environments. Even if calves are indoors, just add some extra bedding. Um, straw is a great bedding option. It's, it adds warmth and insulation. Uh, more than some of your other bedding options like sawdust. And are there any checks that need to be made on the farm or any farming equipment during this time of year? During the winter to prepare, there's, there's really a full checklist from checking the animals, which we talked about, to checking the housing. So if you have a freestyle barn, checking the curtains. Uh, are they free of rips and tears? If you have heifers in open lots, uh, we usually recommend if you can get bales around those open lots just to provide some kind of wind protection or wind shelter. Um, just a little area for the heifers and open lot animals to get out of the wind and have some protection. Um, but it goes beyond the housing and animal needs. You know, check your equipment. Is all of your equipment ready to go for the winter needs? So looking at your tractors, is all the maintenance done or all the repairs done? We need to look at all of the equipment uh, that's used on the farm also. And it's good to have a backup plan when it comes to hauling milk, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, backup plans. I always say not only plan B, but you want to have plan B, C, and D. You never know when the milk hauler might not be able to make it out to your farm um, because of the roads, or maybe he'll make it out to a dairy farm and not be able to leave because he's, he gets snowed in or, or something happens. And actually, we experienced that earlier this year. Um, we had some weather conditions that um, drivers weren't able to make it to dairy farms to um, pick up milk 
or if they were able to make it to the farms, they ended up detouring hundreds of miles out of their way because of closed roads. And so what's your backup plan? Um, how are you changing your milking schedule or what are you doing with excess milk? So always have those plans A, B, C, and D in place. <music>